Hello and welcome to this Adobe Photoshop video lesson. I'm Kingsley Singleton and I'm going to be showing you how to use the curves command to add a cross processing effect to your pictures and it's going to look a bit like this. Now cross processing has its roots in the traditional darkroom but it's a technique that's still popular to this day particularly if you want to give your pictures a, a sort of slightly arty or grungy look or even a, a slightly kind of retro feel as we've got here. It works particularly well on portraits or travel images like this one from Tokyo and the effect was originally created by processing one type of film with chemicals intended for another. This led to an intriguing mix of unnatural colours and increased contrast and modern apps like Instagram have made cross-processing popular once more. But although they offer a quick and easy route to adding the effect to your pictures, using Photoshop will give you a lot more control and a higher quality end product. So in this technique you'll see both how to use the curves command to control the colour channels in Photoshop and also to boost contrast. Now we're going to be using the layers palette to add our curves adjustment and uh, as you can see here this is my finished version. So what we'll do is we'll click and drag that one into the waste bin taking us back to our original image. If you're missing your layers palette just come up to window and down to layers and make sure that option's ticked. Now the first thing we need to do is add our curves adjustment layer and we do that by clicking on the create new fill or adjustment layer icon just here and picking curves from the list. And then if you take a look in your adjustments panel you'll see the curves effect in there. Now most of the time we use this curves command to control the lighting of the picture by clicking and dragging on the line and usually we increase contrast or we make the picture lighter or darker. In this case we're going to control the color channels of the image independently. So Although it's set up by default to control the red, green and blue channels together, all we need to do to split them up is click where it says RGB and first pick red from the list. Now we're only controlling the red channel and what this means is that we can add a bit more red to the highlights and take a bit away from the shadows and that's the start of our cross-processing effect. So to make our changes we just need to click directly on the line and there you'll see the image kind of getting warmer as I drag the curve up in the highlights and then I'll click and drag it down in the shadow areas. So as you can see we're adding red to the highlights and removing it from the shadows and when we remove red we make the shadows have more of a cyan cast and that makes them look cooler than the highlights and gives us a nice kind of color contrast. The next thing we need to do is switch to the blue channel and again we do that by clicking where it says red and this time selecting blue. Now the line goes back to a diagonal there because it's unmodified and this time we want to remove the blue from the highlights. So we click up at the kind of uh, top right there and we drag downwards and then at the other end of the scale we click and drag up to make the shadows cooler again. So a sort of a, a reverse of the first step really we are adding blue to the shadows this time and when we remove blue from the picture we effectively add yellow. So again this is a cumulative effect and it's making the highlights warmer. So overall we're adding red and yellow to the highlights and we're adding cyan and blue to the shadows. The last stage is to switch to the green channel and um, we can be a little bit more sparing here and this time we'll just click again at the top right and we'll drag down slightly because um, that's going to add magenta to our highlights. Magenta being the opposite of green in the color spectrum and then we'll click and drag down at the bottom left of the chart up ever so slightly just to add a little bit of green to those shadows as well. Now because our adjustment layer keeps our curves effect separate from the original we can click the eye icon to turn it on and off. So there's our original and there's our cross-processed effect added. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit more contrast to the picture so we'll click back on the RGB combined channel and this time just as before we're going to click and drag our highlights up a tiny amount and our shadows down. And this is going to make our highlights brighter and our shadows darker. So with that done we can drag our adjustments panel out of the way and we can enjoy the effect that we've created. One last thing to remember is of course because we've added our effect on an adjustment layer we can control its opacity. So say we don't want it uh, to give it the full effect we can just click and drag our opacity down a little bit maybe to about uh, 80% and then if we're feeling even more creative we can also change the layer blending mode to something like soft light or overlay which will give it even more of a kick but in this case we're going to leave it set to normal and we're all done. The last thing to do is just to flatten the image back to a single layer ready for saving so we'll press Control and E or Command E on a Mac and that'll take us back to where we want to be. 
Okay, so that's how to add a cross-processing effect using curves in Photoshop. Hope you found that useful, and I'll see you next time.